What I've got here is a very simple program. We're going to enter an integer, a double, and a decimal. Three different types of numeric values. An integer is only whole numbers. Double can contain decimal places, whether it's one DP or several. And decimals are very similar to doubles, but you usually use decimal data types in Visual Basic when you're using uh, monetary values. What we're going to do is process the numbers that are contained in here, that we enter, sorry, and then we're going to output the results, just so we can see the difference in the different data types, but also um, all of this is going to be using variables. So double click the button process data. Right, if I set up some areas first, we're going to have a declarations area. We're going to have a space for getting input, those numeric values. We're going to process those data, that those data, just going to change it in some way. And then we're going to output the results of the processing. So we go up here and we're going to declare three variables. One for each of the different data types we're using here. Now, I can't use the word integer as a variable name because it's a keyword in Visual Basic. So I'm just going to call it first integer, meaning the one we're typing in as our input. And we're going to instantiate it to hold a value of zero. So every time the process button is clicked, the value of these data types are going to be reset to zero. Follow the same pattern this time using double, first double. Remembering that both doubles and decimals can store data that were decimal places, it's just that the decimal data type is used for currency or monetary values, where the double data type we usually use for non-monetary values. Okay, now we're going to get the input. Now we're getting this input from text boxes. So what we're needing to do is to use appropriate data type conversions as well. So in really simple assignment statements, where we're placing the data goes on the left, we're doing a data type conversion relative to each data type that we've set for each variable. And then we make it known where we're getting the data from. Okay, so we've got three variables declared of different numeric data types. Then we have um, each of those variables populated with data from text boxes. And because the default value in text boxes um, is of a string data type, we've used appropriate data type conversions. Now we're going to modify those numbers that we've picked up from the user input. So let's say, let's show various things we can do. Let's add 5 to the value of the integer that's initially input. Now for our double, so a different way of doing the same thing, we're going to take what's in that variable, like we did in the previous one with the integer, we're just going to add a number. That line is actually doing exactly the same line as the one above, just using different data uh, variables. And let's say something a bit different. Let's add the values of the integer and the double, and it's going to be the new value of the decimal. Now we get our output. And like our input, we're going to use appropriate data type conversions. We need to get it back into a string data type so that it will display nicely in the output 
text boxes. Give it to string or C S T R. And with the decimal, I'm going to use not only a convert to string function, I'm also going to use the format currency function. And you'll see what that looks like in a minute. Okay, so remember we're entering three different numeric values, each that should correspond to the type of data types we've assigned each variable. So let's say we've got 90 as our integer value, 46.4 as our double value, and 123.56 as our decimal value. Now if we compare what's happening uh, with our output here with our code, this is what happens in process. 90 plus 5 is 95, our output's correct. 46.4 plus 65.8 is 112.2. We're adding the value of the integer, which is now 95, because we changed it up here, rather than the 90 that was originally input. Our first double has also changed. It's no longer 46.4 as we first input here. It's actually 112.2. So what we're saying in this third line is the new value of decimal is basically ignoring what I've entered here. It's 95 plus 112.2 equals 207.2. But because we've put the format currency function in there, see what's happened. We've also by default got the dollar symbol and a zero is added after the two to indicate the two decimal places, indicate two that we commonly have with monetary value. 